Welcome back everybody, Boyd here with you again. Sorry for my long absence. Just having a, a lot of spring and summer stuff going on around here. Um, we're back with an update here for you guys today of the uh, large scale C-57D space cruiser build that I'm gonna be starting here. Uh, this is from the classic movie Forbidden Planet. This is a really awesome kit. I uh, picked this up several years ago uh, when they were going for really cheap. Actually, these weren't that popular of a kit when they came out, believe it or not. Um, they were noted for being extremely difficult to build, and I'm going to show you uh, a couple of the reasons why. And they were just, you know, they're, it's a really huge model when you finish with it, so it doesn't fit into everybody's plans as far as, you know, a place to put it, and, and you know, it takes up an awful lot of space. I'm going to be uh, clearing out some space in my uh, display room, putting some of those models, you know, packing a couple of the models that I've had on display for a long time away so I can make room for this when I get done because I think I'm going to do a regular diorama for this. We're going to do a, a base for it to sit on kind of, you know, simulating the planet surface because the model is depicted as being landed um, the way that it's built. There are a couple little things about this kit that I'm going to show you guys. Um, I've done some preliminary work here. I'm starting to paint um, some of the interior detail. The cool thing about this kit is that you get the fully detailed interior for this unlike the uh the smaller version of this kit um and so there's a lot of you know uh, control boards chairs uh cruise quarters um you know most of it looks like it's pretty accurate to the movie too as far as what i can tell but i'm kind of looking at the movie right now i'm picking out some of these colors you can see i've got this kind of neat looking um almost transparent blue that's going to be on some of these panels we got a lot of detailing to do on the floor and stuff like that so there's going to be a lot of um, masking and uh, probably some hand painting in some areas. And then we'll go over it and seal coat it all to make it look a little bit smoother so we don't hopefully notice, you know, the uh, brush strokes with the hand painting that needs to be done. Some of this stuff is just so small, that's the only way you can paint it. But um, we're going to change up the colors and add some life to this. Right now it's just all been primered. Um, but it'll all start coming together. We're going to get into the heavy part of the assembly here in the next video. Uh, you get these... Uh, figures with the kit, which I've gone ahead and painted those all up. You can see you've got Altera there on the far right, the commander there right next door, and then the rest are kind of regular crew guys in different poses. And their uh, uniforms that they have are really accurate to the movie, which is pretty cool. Then you've got the id monster here that's molded and clear. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this is you can see I've gone over this and painted like the highlights on the, uh, the surface detail here. Um, he has a backside that goes on him too, and then there's an the inner mouthpiece that goes in there. But we're going to be putting some uh, really cool LED lighting inside this guy so he lights up like he does in the movie. You know, he's, he's basically invisible, and you only see the outline of him, and you see kind of the highlights here of his face and all that. If, you, if you're familiar with the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But I think we're going to go with some color-changing RGBs inside this guy, you know, because he hits their um, force field there, and he's getting lit up or whatever. So that should look pretty cool. And we're going to come up with some lighting on the ship. We're going to light some of the interior here and some of the other... Uh, the lower dome kind of make a kind of a uh, when it's in its parked position it's not really on but I think I'm going to add a little bit of a glowing effect to that um, they don't give you the detail of the uh, inner um, kind of fan blades that are in the lower part here like they do on the smaller kit so I'll have to come up with something that you know I'll just um, use some black uh, vinyl tape or something on the inside just to give the illusion of that shadow that's in there because we're just going to have kind of a little pulsing effect on the bottom kind of dim like it's idling or whatever and uh, that'll look pretty cool. We're going to light up the stairwells and all that. Now, the big thing about this kit that turned off a lot of people was this upper dome right here um, is not exactly the right shape. It should be more of a rounded kind of, you know, regular round dome instead of having these kind of, you know, radiuses here where it almost looks like it kind of goes straight. Um, the piece is actually beautiful. Let me um, get it out of the packing here and show it to you. This is a really beautiful piece that they made. I mean, it's made out of clear styrene. And it's really thick, and it's super, super clear. Like, there's not a single flaw in it. It's really gorgeous. Um, but it's the wrong shape. Now, there was a guy out there that was making a replacement for this um, that had it listed on eBay, and I think he had a Facebook page. And I contacted him a couple years ago and um, never got around to getting one. He told me he would make me one, but he was kind of out of commission at the moment, and I just never got back to him. So I'm going to contact my friend Elliot Brown and see if he can maybe come up with something here for me. Uh, he does some uh, vacuum forming, and uh, I don't know if he can handle something this big or not. But the the point that I want to make is that I want to, whatever I use, if I can't come up with something that's, you know, just as clear as this, 
then I'm not gonna, I'll just go ahead and use this one and not worry about it being a little bit off because I really want that clarity um, when I put this on. Because what I'm gonna do, you guys, is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna mask this off so that we basically have like the back side of it uh, that's gonna be left in clear and then the front part here we're gonna paint so that uh, if you look at the model like basically like this from head on, it'll look, you know, like it's supposed to, you know, in its regular form. But if we wanna kind of spin this thing around, we'll be able to uh, see the whole detailed interior by looking down inside there. So I think that idea will work out pretty good. You got the same thing here on the bottom. There's a lower uh, dome. Here's the upper part that I've kind of started to paint on. You got this kind of silver grid work here that's gonna go at the very top, just underneath of the top dome. And uh, it's gonna be really cool. There's an upper and lower level as far as the decks go in here. Um, so there's, you know, there's gonna be an opportunity to put some cool lighting and stuff in there. Maybe some blinky winkies here and there on some of the uh, control stations and stuff like that. Uh, the one figure that I po didn't point out that you also get, you get a Robbie the Robot figure. Um, would have been cool if he came with his little space car, but he's just kind of standing all by himself. But we'll put him in there somewhere. Um, but the, uh, the biggest part of this build that uh, scares a lot of people away, and I can understand why, it's basically that to build the ring of the ship, you're, you're putting these huge uh, pie wedge pieces together. And um, a couple of the builds that I've seen of this out there, there's a couple that are really, really nice. And uh, they don't go into a lot of detail, unfortunately, about how they achieve that, whether they actually replaced the ring and made their own which I originally thought about doing out of plexiglass or something like that. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and try to make these work. But uh, a lot of the builds that you see out there of this kit, the, you know, there's like a uh, something like this going on all the way around the edges. You know, it's not straight or whatever. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a jig for this. Uh, or, you know, I'm probably going to have to use our kitchen table, which is a really nice hard wood surface that's um, perfectly flat. And it's the only place I have that's big enough uh, because none of my workbenches out here are big enough to accommodate this once it's all laid out, the top and the bottom, when the wedges are all put together. This is going to be a huge circle. I think there's like six or seven of these wedges that go together to make the complete circle. You can see there's some bracing on the back side. But uh, I'm going to use, uh, you know, two-part epoxy to glue these together so they're really strong. Um, I thought about, you know, going in here and adding a whole bunch of reinforcement. And I am going to do a little bit of that. I'm just going to have to kind of see what I'm going to have to do here. But we don't want to add a whole bunch of weight inside this either. It'll make it even worse. You know, it'll make it droop or whatever. So we got to be careful about, you know, kind of balancing the stability of it versus, uh, you know, how much material we put in there. So I'm going to come up with something. But um, the next video that you see on this will be working on the wedges or at least starting on them. And I'll come up with a plan and share that with you guys as far as what we're going to do on that. Um, just regular bottle glue to initially put it together. And then we're going to back it up with epoxy all over on the seams. Now, I use this... Um, uh, body filler material that you guys have seen me use before. Um, this is called Evercoat. This is um, actually for, you know, repairing plastic body panels on cars. So if you crack your bumper or something like that, uh, this is what the body shops use to, to repair that. Um, so we're going to be using this on the uh, gaps in between the, you know, the, the segments of the ring that go around here um, because it's a really good material. It's designed to flex a little bit without cracking. It's very sandable, and it sticks really, really good to plastic, so it's not regular Bondo. It's a high-tech, you know, kind of modern material. It's called Polyflex, by the way. Um, you can only get this at body shops. They don't really sell this at, um, uh, you know, at regular car parts places. It's kind of a professional-grade material, if you want to call it that. And it's not cheap. It's about $45 for this tube, but this tube will last me several years uh, without drying up or whatever. It does use an activator that you've got to mix with it, a catalyst. So um, you have about maybe five minutes of working time once you activate it. Uh, so you got to apply it pretty quick. So what you want to do is make small batches. Don't make one huge batch that's going to dry up on you before you finish using it. And we're just going to carefully go along these little gaps right here, fill those in. And then the trick to making this come out really nice and flat and smooth is you got to use a block sander. You cannot uh, sand this by hand or whatever with a piece of sandpaper in your hand. You'll never make a straight line. You got to actually use a block, put your sandpaper on that and just, you know, work it all out. And that way it'll come out all nice and flat. That's the same way you do like panels on an automobile or whatever to make them look nice and straight. And then you can spray like a black mist coat on this with some primer and then you can block sand it again. You'll see where all your low and high spots are and you just keep working it down until everything's perfectly smooth. So that's the plan. Whether it works or not, we're going to have to find out, but I'm pretty confident that it'll work. It's just a matter of making sure it's strong and everything, and it won't flex or crack or anything. 
Um, you know, once I get the model all built and it's reasonably uh, sound and everything, it won't be getting moved around a whole lot and all that. Like models shouldn't be really anyway. They're meant to be displayed and not, you know, handle a lot like a toy or whatever. So hopefully it'll all work out really good. But uh, this is just an introduction to this build for you guys. And um, the Enterprise aircraft carrier, just for those uh, that are wondering, it's going to be on hold for a little bit. That is just a uh, real slow and tedious model to build, you guys, like like ship models usually are. And that one uh, surprised me as far as when I chose to build it this spring uh, with all the photo etching and everything that goes with it. So you'll see that come back a little bit towards the fall. It's really, really hot out here in the shop during the summer, and I only have a limited couple of hours I can come out here and work um, in the evenings after it cools off a little bit. So this project here, I feel like I can kind of knock it out in a couple of weeks like our usual thing here and and uh, be able to show it to you guys all complete and everything, where the Enterprise Carrier is going to take um, several months to get that done. So we'll resume the work on that in the fall when I can... Um, spend more time with it and everything. We've also got a couple of other cool ship models that we want to tackle. We've got the big Titanic and uh, the battleship Texas that uh, our good friend Henry sent to us. So you'll see those on the channel at some point. So don't fret about that, you guys. It's not going to disappear. But uh, this was just a quick update for you guys. We'll be back uh, in the next day or two, probably over the weekend, and we'll get a little bit more done on this. I'm going to be starting on the wedges and uh, see how things come together. We'll see you next time, everybody. Until we do, take care and happy modeling out there, guys.